Hi, today I want to tell you a little bit about Embark. This is a recent game published by TMG. It is a Euro game that combines two mechanics, one very common in Euro games and one, I don't know, maybe not so much. The most common Euro gamey mechanic that you find in here is worker placement. You have a lot of wooden cubes, that alone tells us it, this is a Euro game, and also those cubes make the box fairly heavy for, for the size. So you will have your cubes representing different workers and you need to send them to different islands to uh, perform different tasks. The twist is that before they can actually get to the island, because before you can place the workers on the island, you need to be able to place them on the ships that will go to the island. So there's that extra step and maybe not all of your workers will get to go to the place where you want to place them. Double placement, first place them on the boat and then place them on the island. The other mechanic is a secret selection of action that doesn't always, I don't know, I don't I don't see it very often in your games, at least I can't think right over my head about games where it happens. It's something that I identify more in games that have to do with combat, that have to do with tricking each other. And there is a little bit of this here, uh, maybe more than a little bit. But you know what, before I start commenting about the game, why don't I show how the game actually works? During setup of the game, you will place some of these large cards on the table. The number depends on the number of players. These cards are double-sided and the two sides are different and they do different things. Each card has two slots which, with letters. You will need to always start with A and then you go that way, alphabetically. Under each letter slot, you will place a boat or a ship, it depends, uh, and the designs of the ships come from this deck of cards that has a lot of different ones. Now, each player also has a screen, a player aid, and a pool of cubes in their color. The general idea is that during your turn you will plot your, your actions, that is you will take a number of cubes from your personal supply, you will place them here committing to sending them to different ships. Everybody does that behind their screen at the same time. So each turn starts like this, then after this uh, each player will move simultaneously, once everybody is done plotting, will move the cube simultaneously to the corresponding slots. For example, this one, A, goes not on the bow just yet, but next to it. I want to send these ones to B and these ones to C. And maybe my friend next here has done this and this and this, and the friend on the other table has done something like this and this and this and this. So we place all of the cubes so that we have committed to certain ships under the ships, not yet. Then we start a new phase and the general idea is that first we're going to load them on the boats and then we're going to send them to the islands where they will do stuff. After everybody placed their cubes under those ships, we uh, take turns. During their turn each player will move one of their cubes, any one, on an empty slot on the boat. That, that the cube is facing. As you can see there are different symbols meaning that once they are on the boat they will specialize in different things and they will do different things. But again it's very important that we are alternating. For example I'm gonna place a cube here and now it's green player's turn and green player does this and then it's pink player and pink player does that and I oh shoot maybe if I wanted to get on the boat and I'm yellow player I should have done that before. Oh well, now it's my turn again, and I'm gonna place that one there, and then it's green, and then it's pink, and so on and so forth, until we place all of the cubes that we are able to place, which may not be all of them. However, the cubes that you're not able to place go back behind your screen, and they will become available next turn. So there is that, they're not completely wasted. In fact, if you kind of like are unlucky, the first couple of turns you can build a little bit of momentum with large number of cubes later. So if we place on the ships or boats every cube that we possibly can. After that it is time to travel, hooray! That is we place the cubes from the ships to the island but we only unload the ships that are full. So this one has several empty slots and nothing happens. This one is full so these cubes will be transferred from here to the island. 
they are resolved from top to bottom and here you have a reminder so the green cube the green player will get to place their cube on the island and then the yellow player will do that and the yellow player will do it again then we get another ship and then we move on to resolving the next one and again pink goes first green goes first and so on and so forth now you see those symbols on the ships what that what those mean they indicate what the what the worker what the cube does on the island cubes may become miners now the island has a section where you have mines it's right there on top of each island and simply you take your cube and you place it on an available slot next to one of the mines if there still is one if you have farmers what do i got the farmers i don't see any farmer right now uh, actually they're called colonists there we go if you have colonist cubes colonist cubes they're placed in this section of the island here doesn't matter exactly where if you have explorers they are the one represented by the compass then they go on the first available space on this track here each island has a different track so for example this ship here is the explorers and we place one here one here, I'll explore here, and then we have a miner, we have a miner here, and we place the miner up there. The explorers, as they, when they fill up this path here, may reach a space that has a key token, in which case you take the key token and you move it to the top of the island. Each island has a section on top with, certain, with several slots where you place open, oopsie, open locks, uh, open locks, and when you place that, that may unlock different abilities. You simply need to read the text and see what those abilities do. You may be able to do different things, score different things, and so on and so forth. Other important things, so when you have four farmers or four colonists, on an island, they uh, they create a farm. You place one of these tokens on top of them. The farm will be worth 15 points at the end of the game. It's also very important to those colonists. They cannot be um, affected by game effects anymore unless there's something that allows you to break that rule. This is important because there's still a category of travelers that we haven't covered, which is the warriors. We are warriors. What the warriors do is they displace another cube. So, for example, if there is a ship here. If there's a ship here that is giving me a warrior, when I place it, I cannot displace those. Also, they are mine, they'd be silly, but I can go and displace that one. So, warriors are very powerful. This is, there's, even, there's also one last category represented by the anchor here, and those are captains. And captains pretty much are semi wild cubes because they can act as explorers or colonists or miners. Once we're done transferring all the cubes that we can possibly transfer on the board, several things happen. The island produces each explorer on the board each explorer is worth one victory point to the player that controls that explorer so that's very valuable uh, farmers this is the time of the turn when they for groups of four build farms miners you collect one ore token for each ore token that is available next to one of your miner cubes and maybe that the mine runs out and so that miner doesn't do anything so these are very valuable, especially on in the game. But it is also true that there are game effects that are unlocked later that may allow you to still do something with your miners that you that are just sitting there on empty mines. So this is a general idea. You plan where you want to send your cubes. You put them next to the ships. You place them on the ships, and then they you finally place them on the on the islands to produce different things and you continue like this for six turns you repeat the procedure six times at the end of the game you will score points based on different things uh, unlocked island bonuses remember those abilities that can be unlocked some of those will be scored at the end of the game mining bonuses which is what you get for uh, collecting ore tokens and at the end of the game this is how much they're worth. One to four is three points. 
5 to 9, 10 points, 50 or, or more, 45 points, super valuable. And then you will also go, uh, you'll also receive exploration bonuses. Each track, as you can see, has several banners there. And the islands will be worth, will be worth um, that, that number of victory points uh, that has been unlocked. Now, interesting enough, the explorers unlock the bonuses, but the bonus is collected by the colonies. Meaning, if the explorer, explorer track arrived up to here, as you can see that six, that means that the player with the most colonists will score six points. Suppose that we fill up the exploration track uh, all the way to that space uh, that says uh, 20, 10, and 4, 20, 10, and 4, that means that on that island, the player with the most colonists will score 20 points, second most colonists 10, and third player in the category 4. So it's something that's a little bit tricky, because we think the explorers are gonna prepare uh, bonuses for themselves, but they don't, so you need to do both. I remember, the explorers will score your points at the end of each round anyway, so that is pretty good. So, collect points at the end of the game for um, for unlock bonuses or explore bonuses. Add those to other points that you may have collected during the game and that you have kept track of by using these victory point tokens. And at that point, the player with the most points is the winner of the game. So, Embark. Um, Embark is a good game. At least my group really enjoyed it and so they died. It is a solid game. It is a double worker placement, but it's not just the same thing twice. There is more about it. The fact uh, that you have this bottleneck when it comes to the ships really creates an interesting uh, multiple levels of decision. Uh, first, you have, of course, to try to figure out where everybody's going to send their people. Sometimes because you actually want to compete with them and some of the times because you don't want to so you just want to be sure that you're going to put a lot of people on a ship, send them to do a lot of different things. On the other hand again, oh I really see that player has a lot of has a lot of ore already. I don't want them to get a ginormous set that will score them 45 points at the end of the game. Now I'm going to try to push for that for that thing. So you have that interaction reading each other's intentions. And then you have almost what feels like a mini game after the cubes have been placed next to the ships when it comes to deciding the order in which you're going to place those cubes, uh, which boat you're going to give preference to, and also where they're going to go. And that, uh, now, it's often a mini game. Uh, there are cases where simply you don't have any decisions or many decisions to make in that phase because all of your cubes, more or less, you know that they'll get on a boat or you know that they won't. Either one, you don't really have many decisions to make. But throughout the game, uh, there will be at least a bunch of turns in which you really have some tough, interesting decisions and you get into, I can put that one there, but then Robin is gonna do that, but then Luca's gonna do that, oh, then Bob is gonna do it, or why, etc., etc., etc. So there is that interesting element there. Um, know your players because there is a list of possibility here of analysis paralysis. As people are plotting their uh, their placement of the cubes, as people are executing the placement. Uh, so it is interesting because of course it gives you interesting dilemmas to, to chew on, to try to digest and to solve, but at the same time you need players that are going to be able with doing the best that they can without necessarily optimizing absolutely and totally everything, otherwise that may definitely slow down the game. And then also again, when it comes then to placing the cubes on the island, uh, that point is a little more is a little more automatic, but there's still interesting things. For example, with the miners, you choose which mine you'll go to with the warriors. Now, the warriors. The warriors are the only element in the game that I have mixed feelings about, and also my, um, my fellow players were a little bit like, I don't know, this game is so clean, so... Elegant. So these moments of total take that 
uh, feel a little bit out of place to the point that I don't, I don't know maybe my group here too nice it almost was like you know I'm gonna have to displace you just because I displaced two last turn I don't want to be too mean look it's the only way I can score these points we're almost justifying each other now mind you we play the games in which is like yeah take that but here it just didn't feel like it really it really fit the bill entirely not to the point to say it's a deal breaker, it ruins the game or the game is not what it's supposed to, uh, but it just was that note that didn't really seem to fit the frame and that to us weakened the experience a little bit. Um, it's just a game that is fun, really fun to play. In a certain sense, there's already indirect, indirect, um, I won't say take that, but we are racing for the same resources, there are only a number of boats. But in a sense, well, I'm going to place a lot of cubes there, and because of that, you will not, will not be able to place yours. And well, we played secretly, we plotted that secretly. It's not that confrontation as opposed to now I know where everything is, and I'm, boom, going to place my warrior there. I don't know. We just did not enjoy the element all that much. It did not fe we did not feel like it really fit the the game. Other than that, the game is really solid. And again, the words are not a deal breaker at all. You have a lot of interesting decisions, you have different levels of decisions, the scoring is very interesting because you can score points in a lot of different ways. Some are a little bit of a slow build up, some other ones are more immediate, the sports give you points every turn but not that many. The colonists a lot, but you have to work for it. Actually, there's another element that we are a little bit conflicted about, but on, on the other hand, it's not strictly necessary. I don't think I showed it to you in the segment. Um, there are unique power cards at the beginning of the game. Each player receives a card that you can choose um, within a small range of cards, and they give you special powers. They allow you to do something more efficiently, take extra actions, score something more, etc., etc., etc. And we found those not to be really uh, equal in power. Some of those cards seem to us much more powerful than others, and that seem to give an advantage, sometimes a considerable advantage. Some cards will give you benefits every turn, some of the cards very situational, maybe will give you an adventure once per game, and you see there that that is a bit of a problem. On the plus side, if you find that to be a problem, then you can play without, so everybody is exactly the same, everybody has actually the same resources, actions, and abilities, and that's, and that's the way you can play the game if you find that the cards are too random and unequal. Embark uh, is a simple but solid, definitely fun Euro game. They're one of those two really minor things, but nothing too big, nothing problematic. I enjoy playing the game. Some of my players, players in my group already told me, hey, can we play it again? Because we know, Marco, you're obsessed with playing new games every time, but we'd like to try this one again. And I, okay, we can play it another game night too. Not a problem, because I definitely had a good time playing it, and I look forward actually to playing it again.